Hi, my name is John. Welcome to Daily Theology, Ray Comfort Edition. Uh, I post short daily videos to help equip and inspire you to share hope, so please subscribe below. Recently, Ray did another debate with a very well-known atheist named Matt Delahanty. Ray was compassionate as always, and he did a great job, and there were many statements, though, made by Matt that need to be addressed as he is a thought leader in atheist circles. Matt is a very thoughtful person that once professed to be a believer but has since indicated that he never in fact was. But does Matt really think his questions are ironclad in this debate? I mean, come on, these questions have been answered for hundreds or even thousands of years. God is sovereign, and debates get very tricky if you're not willing to go there or allow God to be sovereign and do as he pleases. God allowed sin for his redemptive plan to display these attributes, love, mercy, justice, grace, and wrath. Does God owe everyone salvation? No, he calls and saves whom he will. The problem is not intellectual, Matt, it is spiritual. He can't believe unless God first regenerates his heart, so Matt is right in that. God is sovereign, God does not learn. Foreknowledge has to do with God knowing his sheep in an intimate sense. God never learns, so the idea that God is somehow looking into the future to determine who would choose him to maintain man's autonomy Economy is not biblical and must be rejected as it causes issues as seen in this debate. Matt has a legitimate point here, but the idea of the possibility of multiple universes that God could have created does not negate that he lives in reality and in this universe and is accountable to the true and living God for his sin, regardless of his ability or desire to respond. Penal substitution, the debt question is yet another faulty premise fallacy because only God can forgive sins, which he did for the elect at the cross. God did not send someone else. He sent the second person of the triune Godhead, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. He then imputes his perfect righteousness to the believer. God did not create a list of arbitrary rules for humanity, as Matt asserts. The law is a reflection of God's character and nature. And because man is made in God's image and has a soul, when we violate that law, we are then enemies of God. Blood magic, really? This is not blood magic. The blood is where the life is. Try living without blood. Matt, what if God is transcendental and you're looking for him like a lost cat, which you are? Prove you're married. This was a silly question. Evidence is not the ultimate standard of truth. Truth is the ultimate standard and trust is. When it comes to the silliness of the marriage question, again, if you do not trust Ray when he tells you he's married and then demand evidence, three pieces of evidence, it displays that something is in fact wrong with you, not with Ray. Why not trust him? When it comes to God and his word, there is no higher authority to not believe God is to call him a liar. There is no higher authority, Matt, than God himself. And he has revealed himself to you in three ways, creation, conscience, and the Bible. Other false religions and writings do not negate the resurrection, which is a historical event, and the inerrancy of the word of God once for all. We have a more sure word than the transfiguration, which is the word of God itself. Remember, you must be born again, or you will not see the kingdom of God. Atheism, last point by definition, not as Matt postulates, is a lack of belief. It is a denial of what you know to be true. That's what it is because the evidence for God is axiomatic. Information requires a mind. Jesus Christ and creation require a creator. Thank you, Ray, for being a faithful encouragement. Ray is one of my heroes of the faith, and I can't imagine the state of evangelism by God's grace without him. Soli Deo Gloria. Thanks for watching, and God bless.